Welcome to Eco Ask Why. Today we have a hero episode, and I'm excited to have Mr. Jeff Long. And Jeff is the owner at True Focus Media. And as the owner, he helps industrial manufacturing companies be more efficient and effective in their marketing, sales, and training. And since he started the company in 2003, Jeff has worked with large international companies as well as small job shops. So welcome, Jeff. Thanks so much for having me on, Chris. I really appreciate it. Oh, I'm excited to have you back. So, so looking forward to just hearing your story. Love to get these heroes conversations started with just about hearing about your journey. Yeah, Chris, thanks for having me on the show. I'm, I'm looking forward to talking more about the personal side of, you know, how I started the company as well as some other uh, personal things. Very good. Very good. So maybe get us started with your journey. Uh, yeah. So I actually started the company in 2003. And started with two business partners, and and we were just a video production company at the time. But when when clients kept asking, "Hey, can you do website? Can you do that?" Like we added different services. So, kind of our key three pillars are video production or video marketing these days, website design, and then where where those intersect is e-learning. Uh, so both my parents are teachers, and so e-learning or teaching is kind of um, uh, in my blood. And so I think even e-learning is an untapped market in some manufacturing companies where they're not leveraging the power of on-demand video training, mm -hmm. both for their employees as well as their customers, right? Set up videos, safety videos, things like that. So that's a whole different discussion. But uh, so anyway, started the company in 2003. Those partners um, over time left the company uh, in, in about as good a ways as you can. And one guy moved up to Michigan to be uh, work at a church. Uh, the other guy uh, moved about an hour and a half away from here, uh, actually also to work at a church, uh, which is funny because I actually, my degree uh, is, a, I have a Bible degree. And uh, so the guy with the Bible degree is in business and the two guys that had more of the media marketing uh, stuff are in churches. With, with all the uh, ways to learn these days, it's, it's really easy to get learning and experience. And so, you know, over the course of 20 years, I mean, yeah. you know, that's why I'm able to do everything I'm able to do now is just through all the learning I've done. So, I mean, with your Bible degree, what, what led you to the marketing road and, the, and down that path? Um, I think God has a, a sense of humor, right? Uh, he's not boring. He, <laughs> right. He, he likes the unexpected. Um, so growing up, I... I had all these friends who knew exactly what they wanted to do when they grew up, right? Uh, uh, engineering or, or whatever uh, business. I, I was always, it was like this mystery of like, how do all my friends know what they want to do? And I'm the, the idiot on the sidelines, like just bumbling around. And, and looking back now, I see like uh, Steve Jobs says something like, you know, looking back, you can see the dots connect, but you can never look ahead and see them connect, you know? Right. So I kind of see how God, uh, wired me as an entrepreneur and some other creative ways. So now I'm like, well, of course I'm in this industry. Like it makes, it's a no brainer, but it really, um, uh, so anyway, I went to the Bible college and, and uh, once I graduated, I actually started to uh, do an internship at a church that kind of ended abruptly. The guy I was working with uh, moved to a different church and I was kind of left high and dry. Like, right. what's going on? You know, here I, I moved to a different state. And um, that's when I started this video company. I was hanging out with some guys who were uh, just graduating and um, we kind of all had a, a same kind of goal and, and vision. In fact, the, the day I met these guys and they were friends, so I, we were planning on meeting up. The day I, I, I was going to meet with these guys, I was journaling, which I never do. I, I don't know. But that day I was like, I don't know what I want to do with my life. I mean, and, and I was dreaming because Back then, video wasn't um, accessible. We didn't have phones and all that. It's like, maybe I could like do video stuff and work with companies. And it was just kind of like this foreign, like who does this? I didn't know that that was a thing. So I go and hang out with these friends. And, and one guy was like, yeah, I mean, I've been thinking of like, you know, once now that we're graduated, what if we like did video stuff and, and marketing and worked with companies? And it was like, he was reading my journal, you know, it was like, wow. you know, again, God has a sense of humor. So I'm like, okay, let's, let's give this a try. And once I, once we started, it was really hard work. Once I started, it was like the floodgates of creativity, passion, excitement were released. I remember staying up all hours of the night and I'm not a night person, but like, like two, 3 AM, just 
writing down ideas. Oh, what if we did this? What about the, and it was like, where did this come from? So, you know, it, it, it wasn't anything I planned, but uh, God has a sense of humor. <laughs> I, I love it. Now you said your parents were teachers, right? Yeah. So you're an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. You had that, that entrepreneur spirit. How? I mean, what, did, were they encouraging that? I'm just, just trying to make the connection there. Yeah. I, I don't, again, looking back, I see a little domino. It was like, uh, I went to a, a, a small kind of private school and we had to raise funds for some different things. So I would actually, and we had these fundraisers. I would go door to door in complete random neighborhoods, knocking, asking for donation. You know, not many kids do that. Right. 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 Uh, I was fine with that. You know, I, rejection wasn't a big deal. Um, so little things like that. But even now, my parents kind of look at me like, where did this Jeff guy come from? Like, <laughs> I, I'm not like my parents. I have one uh, sibling, a, a brother. He's kind of studious as well, like my parents. I'm, I'm kind of the weird black sheep. Uh, uh, I have a grandpa who is kind of entrepreneurial, but he also is in ministry. And, and so I, I think I got some of that entrepreneurial stuff uh, from him or whatever. But uh yeah, it's a lot of fun. Well, I'm so glad you got it. This is this is a lot of fun. You're serving industry right now and helping manufacturers. And I'm curious, what do you see? Because you serve such a, a broad mix of the challenges that are out there. Any red threads between all of them that 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 they're facing right now as they try to move forward? That's a good question. Yeah. So, I mean, especially uh, with COVID and after and all that stuff, I mean, um, companies are having to do business in a way they've never had to do. And I think um, some manufacturing companies were kind of pulled into this digital age because of it. Some companies were already there and, and doing great, and that's fine. Uh, so I think there's tremendous opportunities uh, to help and to serve, at least for me, to help and to serve these companies be more effective and efficient with digital marketing. Mm -hmm. So that's really where I come in. And I've worked with some, you know, huge uh, Fortune 500 companies or, or, you know, some of the bigger companies in, in the world. And, and, but yet they still struggle with some of the same things of um, being effective with their marketing. You know, they have so many different products or SKUs or, or people or channel partners or, you know, all of this, that it's hard to, you know, wrap your head around it. So they still need help. That's where I can come in and be of service. Right. Very good. Very good. Now, how about, you know, Jeff, we'd really with this podcast, we try to serve the, the younger audience, the people that are coming into industry and that maybe they're graduating college. Love to get your advice. You know, what, what, what would you offer them as someone who graduated from a Bible college to now you're an owner of a marketing you know, video company? Just advice you'd offer for people to, uh, to consider. Yeah, I think that's a great question because uh, some people get hung up on um, the, the degree I have has to be what I use for the rest of my life. And I knew I was paralyzed with that in high school, in college, out of college. I mean, it paralyzes is a great word. I mean, not literally, but like, um, emotionally and just fear of like, oh man, I have this degree I'm not using. It's not a business degree. What, who am I, you know, almost feeling like a fraud, but yet, when I simplify things and it's really just about who can I serve, who can I help, how can I teach, um, that really makes it easy because I mean, people want to do business with problem solvers. I'm a problem solver. I do it with digital marketing and other things. So that's one aspect. The other is, uh, you know, and it's funny, I don't really shout from the rooftops what my, what my degree is in, you know, uh, maybe I should, but learn practice and serve others. Those are kind of the three steps. I, I would put my knowledge against almost any marketer or, you know, video production company. Like I'm not one to brag, but I'm, I'm, I don't know. I'm good at what I do, right. even though I don't have a degree. Uh, the ability to learn these days is endless. And so don't let a degree or lack thereof stop you. And then practice, right? Even I, I coach some different people who are wanting to start a business and it's like, well, what if you, you know, for the first three people, you almost were like an intern and, and tried to practice your craft with them, get results, and then they can be a case study and a testimonial. And then you just kind of stair step up, right? I, you know, I'm charging a lot more now than I did when I started 20 years ago because our skills, our services, and and even the the people on my team. You know, it's not just the Jeff Long show at my company. I've uh, people that that are really good at what they do as well. So, um, 
yeah, I, I think in this day and age, you can move uh, different industries and you can learn and grow. And it's, it's a tremendous thing. Well, I, I can tell you one thing. We, I, that's a common question on eco ask why, and that's probably the best answer I've ever heard. I mean, just, just the not tied. You're not in a box. You're not tied to your degree. Cause that, that is so true. You know, yeah. you, you can do things particularly now, but I love learn, practice and serve others. I mean, that is, that is it. Cause there, there's so many avenues that we can learn out there right now. And if you get, if you find a passion and you align that to what, where you feel like you're being called to, to serve, you can, you can get the skills and then yeah. practice. I love your, your advice on practicing and building those reps. And, you know, it, it's, that's what it's all about. Getting reps in to get good, to fine tune your craft. And if you focus on others, always, you can't go wrong there. So I think that's the best advice we've, we've had. So thank you for sharing that, Jeff. Yeah. Well, in, and at least for me, it can be overwhelming. Uh, I know a lot of people, it's, it's the what ifs that really paralyze them, right? What if I, I change careers or I, I go to a different company or I do this or whatever. And it's like, um, I could, you know, some of the companies I work with and the projects that we take on, I know we can do them, but yet the what if set up uh, coming to my mind, what if whatever doesn't work or what if, and it's like, okay, that could happen, but I'm the type of person that's going to make it right, figure out a solution and make the client happy. Mm -hmm. uh, and so th those what ifs are like, well, yeah, stuff's gonna happen, right? St technology is gonna have issues and whatever, but I'm the type of person that's trustworthy, gonna make it right, we're gonna find a solution and serve the client. And that kind of, again, lowers my fear right. because it, you know, it, it helps me serve others, which is where the focus should be. You got that right. Now, in that learning part, where you, did you find that you need to reach out to other people from a mentor standship? Has that helped you in your career? Is that something that, 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 you know, a, a path that you've taken personally? It has. Yeah. I, I've done that in a couple of different ways. I've, I will, we'll take almost like from a, a, a target, right? So uh, like you're shooting bow and arrow, uh, I think on the outer rings, I mean, these days, podcasts and videos and books and e-courses are tremendous. Um, just over uh, Thanksgiving, I bought, I think it was three or four online courses about a topic, you know, just because I love learning. Um, and then there's different like groups and, and what we call masterminds, uh, which sounds kind of like, like an evil mastermind or something, but it's, it's more of like uh, uh, people with a common interest getting together. Uh, so I'm in a couple, uh, one is with a, kind of a, a popular author. Uh, so uh, Dan Miller is his name. He's good friends with Dave Ramsey. So Dave Ramsey is kind of known in the financial space. Dan Miller is a really good friend of Dave's, uh, personal friend, mentioned in some of his books and materials over the years. Dan has a really popular podcast called the 48 Days to the Work You Love podcast, which was instrumental before I knew Dan personally. He's actually now a good friend. Um I was kind of, again, in this paralyzed mindset, like, oh man, I, I want to do the, this, but I don't have a degree or whatever. And Dan's whole podcast and materials and books and is about how to find or create the work you love. So for some people, it's finding a, a better job and he has tools to do that. For other people like me, it's more entrepreneurial, how to create the work you love. Right. And he was the first one that opened my eyes to, um, don't think either or, think both and, right? It's easy to think, man, I can either get this job or do that. And he's like, okay, find 20 different opportunities and, and, and narrow it down from there, you know, because sometimes we think too small. So anyway, Dan Miller has been a virtual mentor uh, through his podcasts and books. And then I'm now in a, a, a mastermind group with him and a, a few other uh, business people. So he's become a, a personal friend and mentor. So long-winded answer is yes, uh, mentorship for me has taken uh, many paths, both virtual, personal, and in between. Yeah. I mean, I've heard a lot about masterminds and we haven't really talked about those on Eco Ask Why. Well, you know, where do you find the greatest value out of those? Is that Are they smaller groups? Are they 50 people, 10 people? How do they typically work? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, it depends, right? And I hate that answer. Uh, so <laughs> it can be it can be whatever you want it to be. So it could be four people. I mean, you know, even some Bible studies could kind of uh, be that type of mastermind type of mindset, right? It's right. it's it's that uh, phrase: uh, a rising tide lifts all boats. And so for this mastermind I'm in with Dan Miller, there's I think 30 of us, which is kind of big. Right. I've heard of other groups that are bigger. Um, and really, for for Dan's group, 
yes, it's business focused, but it's more about how can we um, serve our communities, our clients, our families, our, our sphere of influence um, better, right? So I, I not only want to be a better business person, but family member, husband, father, uh, person in my community and my church. And so for, it's kind of a holistic thing, right? But, well, but in the, in the manufacturing space, it could be uh, maybe it's um, five or six marketing people from different manufacturing companies coming together and talking, okay, what's working, what's not working. And maybe it's, you know, non-competitive industries or, or companies. So there's different ways to do it, yeah, uh, yeah. which is the beauty of it. So I've gotten tremendous value. I'm, I'm currently in two or three and they're uh, high value. Well, I, and obviously you're, you're putting a lot of intent in your career to, to be intentional about, you know, yeah. challenging yourself, making sure you're always staying sharp, you know, yeah. and, and, and asking, you know, learning from others. So hats off to you. Great, great stuff. Yeah. Now, how about, I am curious at True Focus, when you're doing the work that you love and it's been a good day and you're sitting at the end of the day and you're talking to your wife about the things that went good, wh what happened that day? When are you the happiest? Oh, that's such a good question. And I've actually thought about this over the years. Like, why do I love marketing, manufacturing, you know, and, and I could step away from, from all of that. And I feel like I could, um, find joy in other um, careers and things. But I think it's the, the spark or the, that I help people or companies be more efficient and effective in, in their business. And, and I don't know why that gets me excited, but I just love helping people. Right. And yeah. so when I see that they have a problem that I can solve, I just get all excited. Um, in fact, my wife constantly, um, Whenever I get excited to talk about a client or a project or whatever, my voice gets louder. And so a lot of times she's like, Jeff, calm down, you know, quiet down. I can tell you're getting all passionate about this. So I, it's a strange thing. I don't know why that excites me. I, yeah. I don't know if it's that service. I just, maybe it's a, a, a feeling the need to be needed, right? It's like, I get excited when I'm like, wow, I, I'm helping people. Like I feel a sense of gratitude from that. Right. I love it. I love it. Any highlights, anything that stands out when you look back over the people you've helped over your career, anything that jumps out? Yeah. I mean, I, I've had the, the tremendous blessing of, of working with, uh, you know, huge companies, uh, Cargill is a 120 billion annual revenue, air gas, uh, Kroger, you know, some big, uh, big companies. I'm, I'm, uh, talking to a, a fortune 500 company right now, but I mean, that is, um, cool. Right. That, yeah. that does make me feel good, but yet I don't really, I just, no offense to them. I don't, I love working with people. So again, it's more like, I, I just like helping people, but like with the Cargill thing, they had a big um, 600,000 square foot facility that they were opening up actually during COVID. And because of that, they had to do some digital promos versus in-person uh, uh, ribbon cutting and some different things. So right. we did a, a, a virtual tour where we went in, we scanned uh, a lot of the facility, you know, um, so you could do a virtual tour on your computer and kind of walk through it. Uh, we did a, a documentary series where we interviewed different people telling the story in a customer focused way. And then we packaged it all together with this um, digital magazine. So it's kind of like a website, but yet different where we highlighted parts of the facility and told the story and had this virtual tour. So that was that was a lot of fun. You know, it was stretching because of the short timeline we had, as well as some other uh, components. Um, one more that was really fun. I'll, I'll try to make this quick. Uh, we did a 3D, uh, 360 degree video project where, uh, you know, we came in with this 8K video camera and we, uh, we had a, a person on camera kind of giving a, a tour and so we had this uh, uh, 3D camera. So you'd put, it was for a trade show. You put on these um, Oculus goggles and it's like, you're in the facility. You're like, I'm here, you know, and, and it's in 3D. So you feel, so uh, at one point we, we moved the camera up close uh, to a railing and it was like a two or three story drop. And, you know, in 3D, you're like, whoa, man, you know, you feel like you're going to go over the railing and, and uh, die or something. But uh uh, so anyway, that was a lot of fun as well. That's but again, it's all about serving people. I mean, I, I love working with the small companies as well as, as the big ones because it's an opportunity to help them. No doubt. I know that. That sounds like so much fun. I used to actually go to a lot of Cargill plants. So that's it's good stuff Thanks. too. So let's talk about you outside of work. 
because you're doing great things there, but I want to get to know you, what yeah. you like to do for fun. So what hobbies do you have? Yeah. Uh, so I was telling you kind of off, off air there. Uh, I've uh, three small kids, uh, okay. 10 and under. So, you know, my time is, is uh, limited. So I'm not out there fly fishing or, or playing sports and, and whatever. But um, uh, so a lot of it is time with family. You know, I, I feel like this is my time to serve and invest in them. Uh, that's, that's huge uh, and a lot of fun, of course. Um, but then again, I'm an entrepreneur. So I love, I, I call it my day job, which is not a negative thing. It, this marketing thing is, I love it, right? right. Um, so I kind of have a, a side thing, which is actually real estate investing. Um, you know, I love that as well. It's an opportunity to um, help some some uh, money partners that fund some of the deals. It's an opportunity to improve uh, homes and properties as well as get good tenants in there, improve their life. So I look at it as a ripple effect of helping a lot of different people through real estate investing. No doubt. How long have you been doing that? Uh, two, um, let's see, I think it's been three years as we're recording, three and a half years. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. What, so it took me about a year or two to learn. Right. Again, I'm, I love learning. So brief backstory. My, my grandpa was in ministry his whole life. Uh, when he died um, five or six years ago, he left a small inheritance. I never expected a penny from him. You know, he's working in churches and Christian camps and all that. But I knew he had some apartments and some other real estate. And so when he left this inheritance, it was like, okay, man, he's left a spiritual inheritance, but this financial inheritance, I almost felt a burden to, to use it, not just to sit on it or buy a car or something dumb. Right. But um, I didn't grow up in, a, you know, we were financially conservative, but I, I, I knew nothing about stocks or investing or any of that. Right. So it took me a, a year or two to learn simple concepts. I mean, in school, math was impossible for me. I hate, hated spreadsheets and all that stuff. So I had to learn to love it and learn to master it. Uh, and so once I bought the first property, uh, I was kind of hooked. Uh, it was really hard, really hard, but anything new is hard, right? Right. Uh, it was worth it hard. And so, um, have, uh, 12 single family and, and duplexes. So 15 doors is what they call it yep. and kind of growing from there. Oh, that is, so. that is great. I'm sure it keeps you busy outside of the, you know, marketing as well. It does. And I have a, a, like a property manager that manages a lot of them and, and some different things. So there's systems that I have and, and, and things. Um, but at the same time, uh, my, my work is flexible, uh, and, and which I love. And so I am able to, you know, sneak in looking at a property here or there or run the numbers, uh, you know, occasionally or whatever, but, um, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Well, I love it. Love it. Now, we, we also love on the show, Jeff, to, to, to learn about our families and uh, from our heroes. So what can you share with us about your family? Yeah. So, uh, I'm married to Christy, uh, we got married in uh, 2014 and, um, and have three kids, uh, ten, two girls, 10, seven, and then a one and a half year old boy that's keeping us on our toes. <laughs> and, uh, we, we thought we were done with two and then we got a pre COVID surprise. And so okay. he's, he's, uh, like I said, keep us on our toes. So, uh, and, and that's one of the reasons for the real estate investing. It's like, okay, we've got three colleges, we've got weddings, we've got, uh, you know, retirement for me and all that stuff. So it's kind of a, uh, a way to, to, uh, hopefully invest in all of our futures. That's right. Now is the rest of your family. Are they all around you guys as well? Uh, my wife's family is here in Ohio. Okay. My family is over in Iowa, uh, where I kind of spent about half my life, but I was born in Ohio. So I, for better or for worse, for our audience, uh, consider myself a Buckeye. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, I won't bring up any recent football games. Uh, I know, right? <laughs> oh, depress me. Depress me. Well, how about I am curious, you know, from, from your standpoint, because it sounds like you love to consume so many different things from e-learning and podcasts and things like that, YouTube. Where, where do you go? Where do you find yourself enjoying the most? Yeah. Oh, so it's funny. My, I, again, I, I was talking to my wife about hobbies, and she was like, uh, podcasting or learning or, you know, because I'm always kind of trying to, I just, I love learning. I'm inquisitive. I, yeah. I like learning new things. So, uh, I'm a podcast junkie. I mean, uh, almost since the, the year that, you know, iPods and podcasts came out, I've just been consuming those nonstop. Um, so when, you know, people like you have, have shows, I love people that, that are podcasting. I think it's tremendous as well as, uh, short videos, you know, so YouTube is, is of course beneficial, right? Um, on the manufacturing side, I'm on LinkedIn a lot. So a lot of people are posting, you know, short video content there. Um, and then of course, books, 
Uh, I'm less of a reader. I'm more of a digital consumer. Um, and then courses on top of that. Okay. Very cool. Very cool. <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I'm always trying to learn something new and it's not always business stuff. Sometimes it's health or, you know, spiritual or just yep. uh, family is, is a big, uh, uh, big learning opportunity for me, of course. Oh, well, curious. What's your, what's your favorite family podcast? Uh, there's one that I've, I've just kind of uh, dove into recently, I believe it's called the 18 summers oh my uh, podcast. I love and it. And the book I believe is called 18 summers, meaning with your kids, you have about 18 summers per kid. So here's a plan. And so I, I just kind of uh, heard about that. I haven't read the book yet, but the podcast uh, is, is interesting. You'll love the book. I actually have it on my desk. Oh, good. Um, oh, good. It's a great book. It, it, it really walks you through you know, it makes you think about the time and how valuable yeah. the time is, but the whole premise, just not, not to ruin it for you, but it's setting up <laughs> one-on-one time each month mm. for each kid. So mm. me and my wife, we have three kids. We, so each month it, it, we've created a schedule and a spreadsheet. So now that you know, spreadsheets, mm. you'll be able to do that and be very right, simple. Right. And then every month it rotates and, you, and it's four mm. hours of un, uninterrupted time. Uh, no cell phones, anything like that. And the kid gets to pick what you do. So we're about, six months into doing it and uh so it's kind of cool because each month it gives that your child some creative chances to think about what they want to do and uh yeah. so i actually have one come i date we call them our board meetings the family board meetings so we have one coming up this weekend and oh, taking nice. my my nine-year-old to a college basketball game she's a big basketball fan so i was like all nice. right so we're gonna do stuff like that so yeah you'll love it love that podcast so uh and we'll put that in the nice. show notes too just, yeah. when, when you said it i was like man that's one i binge. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. I, I'm glad you're you're on board and, and doing it. That's encouraging. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Now we like to have a little fun on the on the hero episodes, Jeff. We play a, we play a lightning round. So if sure. you're if you're willing to jump in, we'll, we'll we'll go right right into it. Let's do it. All right. What's your what's your favorite food? Probably Chipotle. All right. All right. <laughs> yeah. I'm a simple guy, right? Simple guy. Simple guy. Uh, adult beverage. I'm uh, not really. I mean, I occasionally have some, but I, I yeah, not enough to really have a, a favorite. Oh, well, then maybe do you have a favorite soda or what's what do you what do you what do you enjoy? Dr. Lemon? Pepper. Dr. Pepper. Yeah, I'm, I'm a simple, simple, bland guy. Yeah. I hear you. I hear you. What's on what's on your nightstand? What's that? What's on your nightstand right now? My Bible and a a random book. And and I'll be honest, that makes me sound like wow, Jeff reads his Bible before bed. I don't. I, I mean, I read it on my phone. Um, it, it's been there, uh, and I put my glasses on it, but it kind of keeps, um, it's a good reminder as I see it uh, right before bed. So it's kind of a strange answer. So, okay. What's your, uh, what's your favorite app on your phone? <laughs> Probably my YouTube app or my podcast app. Okay. <laughs> uh, how about sports teams? Uh, because I have a young family, I love sports. I've, uh, narrowed my my time spent investing in, not investing, wasting in sports. Okay. <laughs> uh, so uh, the, uh, Ohio State Buckeyes are pretty much my, you know, if I can watch that game in the fall, I'm happy. Um, but I love all sports, basketball, football, not so much baseball, but uh, yeah, okay. I just love sports. Very cool. What's your uh, all-time favorite movie? Probably Jurassic Park. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I've, uh, I don't know how many times I've watched that movie. I love it. Just very um, cool. How about TV yeah. show? Seinfeld. Seinfeld. Yep. Okay. Yep. Music. Uh, Christmas music. I <laughs> I start listening to Christmas music usually like late summer, early fall. Really? I'm, I'm just a weird. So in past years, I've listened to it almost year round. I just I don't know what it is. Both religious Christmas music and and non religious. I I love the, the spirit of Christmas, both for religious reasons and non. You know, it's just. I don't know why. I think as a kid, I had some good memories of traveling to grandparents and doing all that stuff. So I just, yeah, I know people can, can rail against, oh, we don't want to listen to Christmas till after Thanksgiving. I'm like, <laughs> year round, baby. Let's do it. I hear you, buddy. I hear you. Okay. Now, uh, the last one I like to go with, dogs or cats? Dogs. All right. Absolutely. All right. You got yeah. it right. You got it right. <laughs> <Shoo. Woo. laughs> I passed. <laughs> All right, Jeff, we call it Eco Ask Why. We love to wrap up with the why. And this talks about your passions, what drives you. So if someone wants to know what your personal why is, what would that be? I, I think it's, you know, I mentioned this before, but going back and helping people, right? Just serving a need. Um, you know, manufacturers are making cool stuff. Uh, they're really good down to earth people. 
and I get to help them. I mean, that's, it doesn't get any better than that. Yeah. Right. I, I always tell people I haven't worked a day in my life. I get up on Mondays, it's super excited. I'm somewhat bummed on Fridays, even though I, you know, I love the weekends. I love my family. I'm not saying I don't, right. but I, I love what I do. It's not work to me. It's, it's play or it's enjoyable because I like to help people and, and do what I love. I love it. I love it. Jeff, this has been such a treat for us. Thank you for sharing your story. And for the listeners out there, check out the show notes. You'll be able to, to connect with Jeff, with True, with True Focus, all the, the ways to, to, to connect with him directly there, as well as the resources he talked about today. So, Jeff, it's been a blast. Thank you so much. Thanks so much, Chris. I've really enjoyed uh, being on the show. Thanks.